guess is I guess it's cool. I really don't think too 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 deep about that. I guess it's a little bit different over here. I guess we're reclaiming the narrative. Yeah, we want to tell our own story. Yeah, that's that's true. I guess it's a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, I think reclaiming narratives specifically around um, our history is super important. And and to me, it's really kind of just like what it says is, you know, kind of re reclaiming the notion or the history of specific Black experience or Black history throughout, you know, I guess, time, if that makes sense. So a specific example for me is, um, you know, in America, there's there's kind of just like the the narrative that there were just you know slaves right slaves they got their freedom you know they whatever the case is obviously Jim Crow and all of these other things happen after that but in my particular case my um, my family's from Trinidad and Tobago uh, my mom on her side her great grandfather actually fought with the British against the U S for their freedom. And that's a story that's kind of like not really told in America. It's, it's told in some areas of the Caribbean. But after they fought with the British for their, you know, they essentially got land in Trinidad and they were the first free blacks in Trinidad. Because at the time there was still, you know, slavery and things like that or, you know, um, forced labor in, in Trinidad as well. So they were the first free blacks. They fought for the freedom. Uh, the land down in Maruga is still named. Uh, for the company. So like my mom's family is from Fifth Company. Um, so and that's a story that's not really told a lot. Um, it's really not, I, never in any history books or anything like that from at least when I was growing up. And that's a very, very important example of reclaiming the narrative. And I think we need to do that in, in many more cases. Okay, now we're talking. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. Um, one misunderstood. Misunderstood because people have this uh, this uh, narrative or this uh, perception of what we are as black men. You know, um, they think that we're just these guys that are just hard and tough guys all the time. Like we don't feel, we don't have compassion or understanding and uh, stuff like that. So we've been definitely misunderstood. People uh, might think we're just violent or, you know, uh, it's been people think they were lazy and stuff like that. Um, yeah, we're just completely misunderstood, you know? Um, some people might think uh, bad of us from what the media portrays or what the media likes to show of us, but and or what they like to promote in the music or what they like to show on TV. But I wish that people got a chance to really um, come to these neighborhoods and, and and see that that's this false. We don't live that way. We don't act like that. And um, yeah, we misunderstood. Um, I definitely say that it is, it's challenging and it's challenging on a couple of different fronts. Uh, you know, one, just in general safety in this climate, right? We have numerous accounts of unarmed, um, you know, black men, there's, people that have been sleeping that unfortunately have met uh you know excessive force and things like that but then there's also you know career wise and representation and i mean even representation kind of like in hollywood we're kind of boxed into like you know certain roles and things like that that contribute to some stereotypes so it's it's challenging um on, on multiple fronts. And I could spend an hour talking about each of those challenges and areas, but it's challenging. Um, afraid. Afraid is, you know, um, 
people feel like, oh, we gotta be afraid of the the the, the black man, you know. People see us, you know, the the white women uh, uh grab their pocketbooks or you know, or the white people, you know, you walk past their their car, they wanna lock their door real fast and they act like, you know, they're afraid. The truth of the matter is is that we're afraid. You know, we're afraid every day that we walk outside our house, um, just for the little things. Not even um just even I just for one for example, you know what I mean? We don't even have to do something, but even if somebody just says we did it, that's just enough. You know, because here is you're guilty to proving innocent. You know, and um yeah, so yeah, we're afraid and not only do we have to be afraid of our own, we have to be afraid of others. Because it feels like everybody is been taught that when you come here you'll get ahead if you hate us you know so that was that's one um and we're afraid because you know we got to deal with you know we a simple traffic stop could be fatal um you get in an argument with somebody over a parking spot and you know the first thing that they want to say especially if it's another person of another color they want to be like oh i'll call the cops i'll call the cops you know because when they saying that oh i'm going to call the cops on you like that they mean like that equals a death sentence you know like when when a white person says that to you here and they say, oh, I'm gonna call the cops on you. And it's mainly, basically is what they're saying is like, the cops is gonna come here and they're gonna straighten you out. You know, it's gonna be bad on your part. You know, it's not gonna be good on your side. So yeah, we're afraid. We're afraid, you know? Um, we gotta walk around pins and needles, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Um, you know, second, I think, um, I guess I would probably say on the contrary, or on the other side of that, I would say that, you know, I'm hopeful. Um, and underappreciated. Um, and the third word I would say is I wouldn't say um, fearful, but there's a level of, you know, security and safety that uh, that kind of goes with being, you know, black in America. Um, so I would say I wouldn't want to say unsafe, but you know, I, that's a that's a pretty pretty heavy word. But I will say that there's there's a there's a element of wariness in terms of just existing and being black and American in general. Um, making it home safe, making it home safe. Like that's a, like, I know people think like, Oh, you know, maybe he's exaggerating, but, I gave you a story like um, I was jogging and I like to I like to run. So I was running in the neighborhood and, you know, and I moved to a nice neighborhood. So I like to run. And while I was running, you know, um, the officer, it was like I was being followed every time, you know, and then Eventually, you know, they stopped me and an incident had a, a, a shoot and um, I was accused of something uh, and sat there. Um, it was just a long, drawn out situation all because, and I'm wearing jogging attire, like, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, you know, trying to make it home, just trying to make it home. I think, you know, that's what we try to do. 
Um, <laughs> how much time do you have here? No, but I, I'll give you some specific examples. I mean, I think one, just in general, like just again, around the safety thing, um, being able to take a jog wherever in, in a residential area without having to be on alert for, you know, if I bend down and tie my shoes or am I stretching, am I showing up on somebody's ring camera? Are they getting, you know, uh, is, is somebody nervous? I'm also like 6'4", 270, so like I'm, I'm, I'm big at the same time. Um, so I know a lot of people like, I'm just conscious of other folks fear in terms of like when I'm doing things like exercising or walking or whatever the case is. Um, I always have to wear neon bright clothes just so that, you know, folks can see me. And if I'm running at night, uh, a lot of people wear lights for sure, but like I specifically have to, you know, make sure that I have my light if I'm running at dark and things like that. So um, that's certainly one. Um, Another thing is just like in general, just kind of given a specific example, when the Ahmad Arbery, you know, kind of incident was happening, um, you know, I had a, well, my father-in-law at the time who was white, he um, was able to go into a construction and take a look around, right? Like he went in and, and saw it. And this was right in the middle of the Ahmad Arbery case, which folks are probably familiar with. And he came out and said, oh, it looks nice. And I just remember thinking and saying to him, that was something I could never do. Um, so again, when I'm jogging and passing construction and things like that, I am very wary not to linger. Um, just in general, you know, being able to exist without having to make myself a not a threat, whether it's clothes in terms of jogging, whether it's you know, standing next to my car and beeping the, you know, the fob just to make sure that folks know that it's my car. Um, and just in general, you know, um, just being able to kind of like exist um, without kind of not changing who I am, but worrying about the perception and perceived threat from somebody, especially my size too. positive i think the positive i've seen is that um people information people are starting to get information and, and knowledge that's what it is people are starting to get information and knowledge but um as far as any real change people are still blinded you know what I'm saying? People are still blinded by certain things, you know, and then there's certain people that are in power, they don't understand um, what's going on in the community. Uh, it's a situation I, I was, uh, they wanted to do something for the community. So they was gonna build a basketball court in the community and they was gonna have people outsiders come and build this court and i said no i said why would y'all do that i said y'all can employ the kids in the community and teach them and have them build up the park so they take some pride in the community you know what i'm saying so like if somebody is throwing down or littering or something they could be like oh no don't do that you know we built that or they could show their kids and have pride in the community like yeah we built that and then they learn to trade and then you will give them employment you know um but now nah, they don't want to do stuff like that, you know, but I guess everybody's starting to get a little woke now, I guess. So I guess that's a good thing, you know, but we got a long way to go. We got a long way to go. Yeah, when I grew up, um, I was part of the Black, De Black Data Pro Processing Association, the BDPA. Um, I think they still exist and they have chapters all over. Um, that was very pivotal for me to get into tech. Um, I learned a lot. I was able to, you know, meet other, you know, successful folks that were in the industry, other folks that were doing programming back then and things like that. Um, and I know that those programs still exist. I know that there's also, you know, uh, specific, you know, schools and scholarships and things like that, especially around tech, um, you know, for folks to get into. Um, also, just again, touching on, you know, the 
um, shop black owned and black owned products, I see a lot more of support for that. I see a lot more of, you know, things like the, uh, you know, the band aid colors and things like that. I just, I feel in general, there's a more culture of inclusion for, for black people and, and some support and empowerment as well, whether that be from companies, uh, you know, from retailers or whatever the case is. So, um, and then there's obviously a myriad of other smaller community things. Um, I think the urban league was something that was around when I was growing up. Um, and that is one thing that I want to do is also join some of those communities and especially around tech, um, and, and empower, uh, you know, our kind of community to, to get into that field because there is a lot of opportunities. There is a lot of, uh, you know, chances to secure, I wouldn't say generational wealth, but to kind of help even the playing field in terms of pay gap and, and wages and, and job and labors in general. Uh, what would I like want life to be like? Um, more op more opportunities, more or less uh, doors slammed. Like, like you, it'll feel like here, right? They would rather help somebody else, right? That looks like me, but it's not from. All right, but can I be real? I'm gonna be honest with you, okay? I've been sitting here not giving you like a real straight up. I've been trying to like piece through and make sure I'm saying the right things over here. They don't care about the sinners of slaves over here in America. Like they don't care about the descendants of slaves over here in America. Like they'll care about um, other ones and they will rather help other people of color because it's like they can help them without the, the guilt, you know? Um, and that's, that's, that's basically, I'm, that's me being honest. It's like they, it's like, even when you think about the White House and you think about, there's, there's no descent of the slaves, you know? And, um, yeah, that hurts because it's just a it's a reminder that everybody else will get more love than the people that actually built this country. You know, they're more likely to help the people just coming into the country than the people that's been here and the ones that helped build this country. So yeah, that hurts. Sorry, we just had a real moment. I <laughs> that's a, that's a that's a that's an easy question but it's a tough question but i i would i you know i i'd love for us to just be able to exist as as we are regardless of what you know music we're playing what hairstyle we have um what location we're at um you know just to be able to kind of you know be ourselves uh be our authentic selves without having to um you know, kind of not change who we are, but um, be on alert for the perception of threat from those around us because it's it's happened and it's it, obviously there's countless of countless you know incidents where those things have happened and folks were just kind of existing, just doing regular stuff. You know, people picking up trash around their apartment complex and getting you know um, arrested and stuff like that. I mean, there's just there's a lot of that. So I think, you know, just in general, just living, um, you know, a normal kind of life, just like everyone else, being able to, to walk down the street without, you know, worrying about, um, you know, the perception of, of threat. And in general, also from a career perspective, um, a lot more representation um, in general across the board and some of these fields that are, you know, predominantly um, you know, kind of occupied by, by other, other, um, you know, other communities. I think that's, that's a big thing I'd, I'd love to see, uh, going forward, but that starts with, you know, education and some of those other local programs and, 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 and you know, empowerment from an early, early, early stage. If that makes sense. 
one thing I definitely want for Black men in America and, and I guess in general, uh, everywhere, um, to be able to be comfortable to talk about mental health, uh, seek help around mental health, um, and prioritize mental health because I feel like there's stigma, there's stigma in the, in the Caribbean, there's stigma in America, in the Black community around, you know, depression and just like not a lot of understanding about uh, mental health. Um, I mean, there's a couple different things. There's, you know, one, people have brain chemistry issues, right? That manifest in different ways. Um, number two, just in general, the aforementioned challenges that we have to deal with is another level of thing that can contribute to, you know, poor mental health. Um, and and again, there's, there's just a stigma around, I think, you know, black men and 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 uh, mental health and things like that. There's just a different type of load that we have to carry. And I've obviously struggled with mental health issues because of a, a lot of those things. Um, but uh, I obviously felt comfortable getting help and things like that. But I really, really do think that there's not enough, um, you know, discussion. There's not enough education and awareness around the importance of taking care of mental health, whether that be talking to folks openly about it, friends and family, or seeking professional help. Um, that's that's one thing I definitely want. Uh, you know, for the African American community in general, um, because it it there there is just a different level of things that contribute to um, you know mental health load here in America, right? It's safety, the job stuff. I mean, there's just so much that that kind of goes onto it. Um, on top of life in general, like everybody has problems, but we have a very specific, you know set of problems and challenges that I think contribute to mental health. And I, and I really would love to see more Black Americans um, and Black people in general um, just kind of shed that stigma, get help when needed, and also in general, just be accepted, you know, if they are struggling with mental health. I think that's super, super important. Who inspires me? Um, you know, who inspires me? I have to say, I have to say my, my children inspire me to keep going. You know what I'm saying? I've been through a lot, so, and I got a, a second lease on life like I'm the poster child for second chances and one of my biggest I could say prize or whatever I could say is my children because I've lived a life that anything can be taken away you know but them and their love can cannot be taken away you know so I have to say my 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 children, they keep me going. It's the reason why I wanted to, you know, change my life around um and live better, you know, be better is because of them. I live and breathe for them. I work hard every day for them. You know, it's everything's for them. Definitely my mom. I think my mom has been uh, hugely influential on changing my perspective of what it, you know, be, just being black in America. First of all, we're, you know, my family's from Trinidad. Um, you know, they grew up seeing, and my mom has told me this all the time, they grew up seeing black people in power, black people in, uh, you know, high up in schools and things like that. So, um, you know, my mother definitely, also specifically, she did a lot of research on the, you know, Americans, on the uh, folks who fought against the British, or excuse me, fought with the British against the United States for their freedom. And she did a lot of research in that. She did a lot of family training. Um, and that just kind of changed my perspective of, 
you know, identity in, in America. Now, not everyone, you know, is in that same vein, but like, just because, you know, there was slavery in America doesn't mean that that's all we were, right? We had plenty of inventors, plenty of other folks, and some, of, unfortunately, you know, some of their accomplishments never saw the light of day. But uh, my mom definitely inspires um, me in terms of looking at myself and empowering myself as a, as a Black person in America. I also witnessed her, um, you know, do a lot and have to deal with a lot um, being a Black woman in South Carolina. Um, she overcame a lot, you know, got her master's and things like that. So this is definitely an inspiration and kind of an easy one, James Baldwin. Like he's, uh, a, a, you know, I know everyone r respects him for his writing and, you know, some of his comment commentary, but, you know, his debates and things like that, I think have been important, especially during a time where the climate was very, very, very much different. Um, that he's definitely an inspiration for me as well. And my son, I will say that my son um, is uh, is inspiration for me. Um, it's just because, I mean, one, he's my son. Two, he's also proud of you know his his heritage and things like that. And you know, he's you know into black history to a, to a certain degree as much as a seven year old can can you know can be. But you know, yeah, he's definitely an inspiration for me as well. Um, not necessarily. I mean, I think this is great. I'm, I'm glad to, uh, have contributed. I mean, I really do think that this is something that I, um, you know, kind of wanted to do going forward. I think at a, a couple of previous companies, um, there wasn't a whole lot of focus on, you know, black history and things like that. So I'm glad that, you know, you're, you're kind of doing this and, and this is something that I kind of want to be a little more proactive with going forward. Um, also, in some of the community stuff, especially around getting, you know, young black kids into tech, um, I definitely want to start doing that, um, you know, as soon as I can. But in general, um, you know, I, I think that this is wonderful. I, I was not aware that there was a Black History Month in, in the UK. Um, but, you know, that totally makes sense. I mean, the diaspora is 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 always going to be challenged with some of the same things, right? Um, just probably in different ways, different geographical areas, but that's just kind of the way it is. So I'm, I'm sending uh, comfort and strength to, to uh, you know, my community and, and uh, the diaspora during this month. Um, I, w I went away, like, like I left home when I was really young. You know what I'm saying? Like I left home when I was really young. And um, and I ran. I went to the streets, and I I game bang, and I had went. Uh, I went away. I got locked out when I was fifteen. I didn't come home till I was twenty one. You know, so I'm. I and then when I got out, it was nowhere for me to go but back to the streets. So you know, when I got my opportunity, you know, my second chance. I wanted to, you know, mentor kids that went through the same stuff that I went to. So that's why I, I, I talk to the kids in the community, you know, teach them boxing, get them into the studio and try to keep them off the street so they don't have to go through the stuff that I went through, you know? So um, that's what I do. And that's my way of giving back. And, you know, and my community loves me for it. Everything I done, I went through, you know, I, it's, it, it's made me the man that I am today, you know? Um, I hope this was insightful. <laughs> I'll try to answer. <laughs> I, I, I wanted, to, wanted it to be, um, I didn't know um, how you wanted it to be, but I just want, you know, everybody to know, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I want to say. I don't know. Much love, much respect, everybody. Um, be good to everybody and treat others like you want to be treated. That's basically what it is. You get back what you put out. This is, we're recording. This, this is still part of it. 